Hey everybody, if you enjoy the podcast and the content it provides, be sure to hop over and check out the community. The community is an exclusive members website that is just an extension of what we do here in July at the Central Virginia Sport Performance Seminar. What it is, is a combination of video lectures, a coach's corner with your Monday morning take-home information, and a forum where you can talk about anything and everything related to the field of strength and conditioning. In the community, you'll find content added each month from some of the top practitioners in the world, ranging from PhDs to high-level coaches, bringing you exactly what they're doing with their athletes or their research at the present moment. On top of that, an additional discussion by coaches bringing you that Monday morning information, things that you can add to your training program right away. Tying that in with the opportunity to discuss with coaches around the world in the forum on anything and everything from the topics addressed in these presentations to whatever you're seeing in your daily life as a coach. If this sounds like the right thing for you and your staff, go ahead and hop over to cvasps.com slash community and try it out for 48 hours for just a dollar. If you like it, you're signed up, ready to roll, and you're jumping into all the great content added each month. If not, feel free to go ahead and cancel at any time. No questions asked. We're really excited about what we're building in the community and hope you are too. Go ahead and hop over to cvasps.com slash community and check it out today. Hey guys, Chase Campbell here with the Central Virginia Sports Performance Podcast. Um, this is my first one of these uh, My Thought Monday posts, so I apologize if I ramble, but I'll try to keep it short. Um, what I want to talk with you guys about today is a couple of key points that I've learned along the way um, in helping uh, develop and maintain buy-in with athletes um, over the past couple of years uh, of my coaching career. Um, this post is probably going to be directed more towards the younger generation of coaches, uh, so interns, GAs, first-year coaches, um, people who, who maybe don't have quite as much experience in this area just yet. Um, all of these things I've learned from uh, mistakes that I've made early on in my career and that I probably continue to make today, but um, <clears throat> that I've learned a little bit from and, and continue to learn from on a consistent basis. So um, I'll go ahead and jump right in here. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is um, uh, having an athlete-led um, culture within our teams I think is a, is a really great way to not only build the buy-in but maintain and sustain that buy-in over the uh, over the years um, from one class to the next obviously our culture is set in place by our, our head sport coach um, and then supported and backed up by us and, and the other members of the support staff but um, if we can guide our athletes to be the leaders of that culture uh, within the team I think we're, we're much better off in the long run. Um, <clears throat> I think it's much more genuine um, uh, of a culture when uh, you have a group of athletes who can lead the team um, and pass on that culture um, to the upcoming uh, underclassmen as they depart the program. So um, just like in training uh, in the weight room or on the court, um, I'm a big fan of guiding our athletes to the answers and not necessarily giving them the answers. Um, so I think we can do the same thing um, within our buy-in and our culture, and I've had pretty good success with that over the past couple of years, um, is giving the tools to a, a group of senior level athletes um, or veteran athletes uh, and then guiding them uh, to the correct uh, or in the, in the correct direction um, of culture and buy-in, uh, and, and when they are the ones who have built it, um, their peers, their their the underclassmen, their teammates, um, really seem to buy in a lot more um, <clears throat> than if it was just coming from the coaches. So, <clears throat> having a an athlete-driven culture, um, I think, is a fantastic way to. Um, develop buy-in from incoming or newer athletes um, instead of us being the ones that are just harping on them all the time. So um, that was something I learned early on uh, in my career when I tried to walk into a program and lay their hammer down and pretend like I was the one in charge and that it was my way or the highway. Um, that doesn't usually go over that well, um, at least 
from what I found out. So, um, you know, giving my athletes the tools to, to be the leaders of the culture is something I've learned um, to be extremely successful. So uh, next point I want to talk about is, is getting to know your athletes and, and building trust with them. Um, and that being a great way to, to kind of cultivate that buy-in within the team. Um, I've been asked in a, a couple different interviews of what my coaching style is. Um, and, and really the best answer I can give uh, is that my coaching style is whatever the athletes need it to be. Um, we talk about being fluid and dynamic and individualized with our training programs. Um, and I think the same can be said for how we motivate and how we coach our athletes. Um, you know, everyone responds to motivational tactics differently, just like they respond to training programs differently. So um, I think we can be fluid um, with our coaching style based on our athletes' needs. Um, some guys can handle or enjoy being yelled at all the time. Um, a lot of athletes don't enjoy that. Um, that doesn't mean you uh, don't all. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't ever, you know, you know, be, uh, be the hammer. Um, cause sometimes they need it, whether they respond to it on a regular basis or not. Um, but <clears throat> um, you know, if we're truly here to um, help our athletes and help them succeed, then we have to understand that um, one coaching style does not fit all, and we need to do what we need to do. Um, or whatever we need to do to get the most out of each individual athlete. And so that means uh, being adjustable with your coaching style, um, just like you will with your programs. So that can uh, change from athlete to athlete. That can change from session to session within one athlete, or it can change within one individual session based on what you're doing throughout that session. Um, but the most important thing to do is, is to get to know your athlete, um, let them know that you care about them and that you're invested in them um, and that you can be individualized towards them as a human being um, <clears throat> and that right there is, a, is probably one of the single greatest ways to um, cultivate buy-in from your athletes um, and again it's genuine buy-in um, I think it's Theodore Roosevelt that said nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care um, and so if you truly do care about your athletes and you're here for them, then, um, you know, do what you need to do um, for each individual athlete to achieve the most out of them. Um, next thing I want to talk about is uh, learning to speak their language. Um, we can talk about the um, scientific underpinnings of, of what we do all day long with other coaches. Uh, and it's a lot of fun and I really enjoy it. Um, but for the most part, athletes don't really care that much. Um, if they do, that's awesome. Um, but you know, not all of our athletes are exercise science students. Um, not all of them wanna talk about um, rate of force development or being elastic or um, you know, the force velocity curve, whatever, you, whatever it may be. But um, what they do wanna know is how what we're doing in training is gonna translate to their sport. Um, so being able to speak their language and, and connect the dots of what we're doing in the weight room um, <clears throat> to the court or the field is, is a fantastic way. Um, and I found a lot of success with it uh, in, in creating and developing buy-in um, with our athletes. So, um, you know, for basketball, for example, um, we'll talk about elasticity. Being able to be elastic and to rebound quickly, um, I think, is something I've talked about with an athlete before uh, when we're talking about um, different kinds of jumps and, and why they needed to be good at this particular jump. And it was a, a, a post player who needed to get up off the ground quickly and, and repeatedly. And so we talked about here's why we need to do this type of jump and, and why we need to be elastic is so you can be better at rebounding. Um, <clears throat> and if you can connect the dots like that and, and speak their language, um, and you don't have to necessarily be uh, sport specific in your training style, but being sport specific in relating what you do or being able to connect those dots in what you do in training to their sport um, 
is a way to get those guys invested and to truly care about what they're doing in training. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about here in uh, creating buy-in is <clears throat> um, giving your, your athletes some autonomy within their training. Um, there's a couple of, uh, there's quite a few really good strength coaches out there that do a good job with this. Um, uh, guys like um, Josh Bonatal from Purdue and, and Corey Sledginger from Stanford are guys that <clears throat> give a lot of autonomy uh, to their to their athletes within their training. So I know um, I've I've heard uh, Coach Bonatal speak a lot about um, I think in season training he'll have his guys come in and and um, he'll he'll say hey um, how you feeling today uh, you, you know this week you got to give me a, a a heavy day a fast day and then an easy day you know, based on how they're feeling for that week. Um, and, and so that kind of gives the guys, hey, if you're feeling good, let's go for it, let's move. Um, you know, if you're not feeling that great, all right, let's 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 uh, dial it back a little bit and get you moving and feeling better and we'll come back in tomorrow and hit it hard. Um, I think that's a really, really awesome way um, and successful way to get your guys invested in their own development um, is giving them a say in their own training. Um, you know, when they feel like they're a part of the process uh, in a part of their own development, um, I mean that that gives you almost immediate buy-in. Now, <clears throat> there's that takes some time to develop that trust um, and that culture of training within a program. So that may be one of the last options you use as far as helping uh, build that buy-in with your athletes. But um, I think once you get to that point, uh, it, it's a really good way to kind of sustain that buy-in um, over the course of a year or years um, with your athletes. So. Um, I appreciate you guys listening. This is my first one of these, so I apologize if I rambled a little bit. But uh, um, thanks to uh, Coach DeMeo for having me on, um, and I uh, hope to see you guys again soon.